It was nine years ago today when President Obama walked into the Rose Garden and announced a new policy that would change the lives of hundreds of thousands of young people in our country. It is called Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, better known as DACA. That was Senator Dick Durbin today, marking nine years since President Obama created the DACA program. It protected immigrants brought to the country as children or dreamers from deportation. It also allowed them to get work permits and driver's licenses. But it fell short of establishing a pathway to citizenship. It's also currently facing a legal challenge in Texas. Senator Durbin mentioned the DACA anniversary at a hearing about the American Dream and Promise Act. It's one of two immigration bills passed by the House, and it would establish a pathway to citizenship for about two million dreamers. To understand the importance of the legislation, you have to understand how life-changing it would be for the people it would affect. Imagine coming to the U.S. as an infant and decades later living under the constant threat of being sent back to a country you don't know. Imagine working day and night as a healthcare professional during this pandemic, working to ensure other people see another day, but unsure of your very own future. That's the exact experience of one doctor who testified at that Senate Judiciary hearing today. My mother was 24 and my father was 27 when they made the difficult decision to leave everything known to them to come to the United States in search of a better life for their two-year-old son. Little did they know their decision would lead to my career as an emergency medicine doctor. Day after day, I provide critical care to save American lives on the front lines of the pandemic, even as my own future in this country remains uncertain. Vice President Harris is also honoring the ninth anniversary of the DACA program. She hosted a roundtable with a group of female immigrants and advocates where she reaffirmed the administration's commitment to creating a pathway to citizenship. This administration fully intends to do everything in our power to protect our dreamers. There will be no question about that. There is no question about that. And it is really for one simple reason. And this I say to our dreamers, because you are home. This is the only home you've known. And this issue is as fundamental as that. Joining me now is Jess morales Riquetto, political director at the National Domestic Worker Alliance. She was at the roundtable with Vice President Harris today, and actually fresh off that roundtable. So just to start, how was the roundtable today, and what was some of the testimony you heard from the woman in the room? It was awesome. We had the Vice President, Senator Durbin, Senator Menendez, and most importantly, really powerful, amazing testimony from care workers from around the country. You know, we had DACA recipients who shared their stories, a mom and daughter duo, Scarlett and Jacqueline, which is amazing. Um, a recent a uh, TPS holder from Haiti who, because the Biden-Harris administration is now eligible for TPS, as well as um, others who shared incredibly powerful stories about their journeys to the United States, what they've done here so far, and why it's really urgent to pass the Dream and Promise Act um, and immigration reform for all undocumented citizens in this country. It seems like it's been a long time since the DREAM Act was first attempted in the Congress. That was back in 2007, and it failed at the time because of the filibuster. Filibuster is still in place, and the same thing happened again in 2011 and 13 for the same reason. Is there any reason to think this year will be different? Was there anything uh, that you learned in the room today or any sense you got in terms of the urgency that makes you think that this year it's going to happen? Well, listen, Juliana, I'm an organizer, and in organizing, you lose and lose and lose right up until you win. <laughs> So I'm not worried about 20 years because I know that the power of undocumented youth in this country is what's going to propel us forward to DACA this year, to permanent protections for DACA uh, recipients uh, with a pathway to citizenship, and for more than that, for TPS, for citizenship for essential workers, because we've never been more organized. We've never been better resourced. We've never had a Congress that was ready to pass it. 
um, a democratically controlled Congress. And we've never had a president and vice president so committed. So I truly believe from the bottom of my heart that this is the year and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that that actually happens. As a field organizer, <laughs> that was my original political job. I, I can relate to the constant optimistic tone um, that you've always had, actually, as long as I've known you. Um, you know, organizers, they don't get cynical. They just put their sneakers on and they get to work and they organize people and they fight and they fail, but they keep fighting. It's, it's the great thing about being an organizer. It cures the cynicism. Um, one thing that has been in the news lately is uh, the vice president did just go on a trip, her first foreign trip to Central America, and she's been tasked with some of the most difficult issues in this administration, obviously the surge of migrants from Central America is one of those issues. I want to play you this moment from her trip to Guatemala and get your reaction on the other side. I want to be clear to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border. Do not come. Do not come. There's been a lot of commentary about uh, that message. There's been a lot of analysis. How effective do you think that message is? Does it ignore the reality uh, that many Central Americans are facing? What do you think? You know, the journey from here to Central America is a dangerous one. And the thing that I always try to remember whenever I hear about anyone coming to the United States is that people make a decision to move here, to pack up all of their belongings, to leave their home because they have no other options. And it really inspires me because it takes such courage. It takes um, such bravery. And I know that as the child of immigrants, Vice President Harris knows that. She's been a longtime champion of the immigration issue, and she really understands how difficult um, not only the immigration journey is, but what it's like for people when they're here. Uh, that's why I think that today's testimony was so powerful. Um, and I saw the vice president be really deeply engaged with every single person, including Hilda, a leader from Guatemala. You know, she told a powerful story about why she came here, um, why she continues to work and fight, and why she won't stop until she gets citizenship for herself and everyone all of the essential workers and documented people in this country. And I'm really focused on that because that is the urgent task before us. It's such a nuanced issue, and so it's very important to always look at the big picture and understand all that nuance. And I'm so grateful to you, Jess morales Riquetto, uh, for helping us to understand that nuance and helping us understand what happened in that round table today. Thank you so much for taking the time and joining us tonight. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.